Hello and welcome back. It's Quest for You. I'm excited. I'm here. You're here. It's a new day. What are you going to do with this day? I have so many things on my to-do list, so I know some of them will get done. Others may not, but we're here together, so let's set a good intention for today. And today I have a really good message for you. It's called Genuine in Disguise. And if you've been listening to my episodes, you've heard me mentioning a few times the word genuine. I have to tell you, I have a thing for certain words. It's kind of hard to describe, but I just like certain words. It's their sound, their spelling, their meaning. When it all comes together in one word, I'm in love with that word. And genuine is such a word. It's a beautiful word with a beautiful meaning. So listen to this quote from one of Europe's greatest Renaissance artists and a man with a noble character and intelligence. His name is Albrecht Dürer, and I'm saying it, of course, the German way. And the quote goes like this. As I grew older, I realized that it was much better to insist on the genuine form of nature, for simplicity is the greatest adornment of art. Genuine forms of art. I like this quote, and I find it applicable to today's episode because in art, just as much as in life, we make things complicated when they are very simple. We disguise, we confuse, and we try to complicate matters. As a result, just like in art, we cannot see, hear, or understand what's in front of us. This, by the way, is the reason I admire Impressionist art so much. I love it, and every time I look at a painting from Monet or Pissarro or even Matisse, I'm happy. My soul is happy because I'm looking at beauty and simplicity. I'm looking at life, expressed artistically but simple to understand. It's applicable to me, to my life. One day I'll record an episode to express how I feel about art. It's very difficult, actually, to put into words. But just like Dürer states in his quote, I want to start this episode with, As I grew older, I realized that it is much better to insist on the genuine forms of nature. Genuine forms of nature. Genuine forms of expression. Genuine forms of being. If I could get a billboard to myself somewhere along 880, I would write, be genuine. I believe in that simple statement lies so much work. The quest for you is really a way back to your true genuine self. But over time, we have lost the sense for being this person. We have disguised our genuineness with strange behaviors that we feel are needed in order to successfully navigate life. We may not detect these behaviors within ourselves, but most of us are good at spotting them in others, especially when they affect us. And I'm not talking about outwardly aggr aggressive behaviors such as anger, physical aggression, insults, and outright criticism. My episode is titled Genuine in Disguise. I want to speak about the behaviors when we observe them They don't feel immediately wrong, but they also don't feel right. They have us thinking for a moment. We are not sure how to take them. We feel slightly uncomfortable, but we cannot quite put a finger on why. Often, we check it off as a slip or a misunderstanding on our part and we move on. But sometimes, if it continues, we just don't feel right about it, but also don't quite know what to do. So here are some examples. Critical feedback or bad news from a person who smiles and laughs half-heartedly. They're trying to tell you something, but they don't know how. They make an effort to be as subtle as possible so you don't blow up in their face. Who can blow up at a smiling person? It's hard to do, right? So they're protecting themselves. And then there's the silent treatment. I'm sure you know this one. Words were exchanged and now the other person has withdrawn. 
This could be in person, via text or phone or email. A subtler form of this is a person who is openly pouting, grumpy or moody, or maybe just complaining about everything and anything. And then there are these subtle insults that are just a little bit more severe. We usually detect them, but when they come from people close to us, it can be harder. I'm sure you've been out with friends when one friend tells a story and suddenly throws your name in there as a way to make the story more funny or entertaining. Oh, you know, you should have seen it. It was almost like Janine when she has that look on her face and so on. Something like that. Comments like this, they leave us stumbled, thinking, was this meant to be funny or is the person trying to tell me something? Either way, they don't pass the genuine test. And lastly, my favorite, hints. I love hints, don't you? Well, I'm lying. I actually hate them. I never get them. Yes, some hints can be funny or entertaining, but I even have a hard time with those. But these are not the ones I'm talking about. Let me give you a real-life example, straight from my phone to you. Hi there. You seem really busy these days. We all agree it's a hint, right? To what? Who knows? I could lose this entire episode trying to guess. But hints irk me. They irk me because they are trying to convey a message with a hidden meaning. I now have to go and uncover the meaning and I have to find a way to respond to it. They sap my energy, my valuable time and energy because I now have to figure out someone's hidden scripts. And that is the problem with all of these examples. Critical feedback wrapped up in a smile, hidden insults, the silent treatment, and a huge and wide variety of hints. And I'm sure there are more. They all have the following in common. I call them genuine messages in disguise. People are trying to tell us something, but don't want to or unable to be direct and straightforward in a genuine way. The message itself may be genuine. Yeah, you know, maybe we did screw up and need to be told. Maybe we hurt someone and they have a right to be upset. Maybe we missed a birthday or forgot to respond to a text message. Or maybe we made a commitment we didn't follow up on. We are not perfect and make mistakes or errors of judgment every single day. But what makes life really complicated is when we're not able to communicate with each other clearly and genuinely. People, including ourselves, wrap up their truth in a disguise for various reasons. And it makes everything more complicated. The main problem I have with this is that it's an easy way out for the messenger. Instead of making an effort to be clear and direct and genuine, the person sends a half-complete message. Now the work is on us to figure everything out. And that requires tons of energy. It gets our emotions all wrapped up and it distracts us from more important endeavors. And in the end, it may be a totally futile effort because we're still getting it wrong. I don't know about you, but it takes real effort to respond genuinely to words that were not genuine in the first place. So another byproduct is that we often respond with equally half-complete messages because our feelings are now in play and it has just become really hard to be nice. So clearly, my advice today is not to be found in the, in the title of this episode, as it is in most occasions, but I wanted to spend time today illustrating that the convolution that erupts when we are not genuine. And it's easier to illustrate when it's done to us. But we all do it too, because being genuine is not easy. It requires effort. To give critical feedback, to be honest with another person is hard. It requires us to think about our words, put some effort into the message. And most of all, it requires that we are okay with who we are. No hidden agendas. But I will leave that for another episode. I think it would make for a great topic. If we could just make an effort to be more genuine, I strongly believe this world would be such a better place. Filled with more love, more friendship, more compassion and more clarity. So to end this episode, please keep in mind 
the following. There are actually several messages in this episode for you, and I want to be clear and genuine so you understand what it is that you should take away from it today. Be genuine and clear with others, even when your message is difficult to deliver. Don't shirk responsibility by putting the work of piecing together your message onto someone else. It's not fair. You have the issue, so you need to convey it clearly and understandably. And on the receiver end, make an effort to interpret the message in a genuine way. Don't read more into it than there is. Meaning, if you screwed up, take responsibility. And to this I want to add a quote by Christopher Hitchens. And you'll understand what I mean. Those who are determined to be offended will discover a provocation somewhere. Don't be determined to find flaws in every message. And lastly, insist on the genuine forms of nature, for simplicity is the greatest adornment of art. Bringing this quote back, because its essence is my message to you. Use simplicity as a basis, and being genuine will become easier. And if you struggle with it, go and look at some art. It may inspire you in unexpected ways. So today I want to end with love, with smiles, and a genuine hug from me to you. Go out and make the world a better place. Until next time.